Now, live from Wish TV, this is 24 Hour News 8's Daybreak. Learned that the vice president himself was now, um, you know, using the same practice. It, it just is just another indication of how hypocritical all the attacks were against Hillary Clinton. All new on Daybreak, new controversy surrounding Vice President Mike Pence and his email when he was Indiana's governor. The Indy Star says Pence used a private email account to do official business. Also new on Daybreak, no sharing. Purdue did not even play last night, but this morning the Boilermakers are the sole Big Ten champs. We're going to show you the moment that made it so. As for the weather, we are off to a cold start. Some viewers may even still be seeing snowflakes right now. Ken says we should warm up over the weekend, though. Good morning. Welcome to you. It is a Friday, third day of March. Thanks for starting the day with Daybreak. As other stations turn over to national news, we've still got a couple more hours of local news coverage for you today and every day. We do that with team coverage. We have six people watching the headlines this morning. Brittany Lewis is live along I-70, which is considered a sheet of ice in some spots. Drew Blair is live at a major traffic problem on the south side. And Jessica Smith has the overnight details on the Pence email controversy. And Kylie Conway is in our newsroom looking into court documents on a high-profile case. First, though, let's get you out the door safely, at least where it's possible. Nina Criscola has a report on the roads that are, again, Ken Brewer affected by the weather this morning. That's right. And only certain spots are being infected by the weather. If you're watching us west and south of Indianapolis, you're not going to have really any problems. It's east to the north. We had some flurries and snow showers overnight that just put a little bit of a coating of glaze on the roads, an invisible coating at that, which makes it a little bit tricky. So here's a look at Noblesville up at the White River as we're getting closer to daybreak, which happens, by the way, at 715 this morning. And you see some hints of just a little dusting of snow. Again, it wasn't a lot of snow, just a little dusting from bursts that moved through overnight. That was causing problems. What's left of that, just a few flurries in place right now. So none of this should be causing any problems. It was the burst earlier as we put this in motion. It's really started to fall apart as it's moved through southeastern Indiana. But as we show you the past three hours, you can see that we had that area kind of come on through north and then east of Indianapolis. That was enough to put some of the glaze and some of the roads and cause the problems. Again, west and south of Indianapolis, you did not participate in this, so you don't really have any problems as a result. Temperature did drop two degrees at the top of the seven o'clock hour, 26 degrees. Factor in the wind, it feels like 14, it feels like 10 in Kokomo, so wind chills in most locations are in the teens. So for the last check of the bus stop for the kids getting on the bus this morning, temperatures around 25 degrees. That 11 mile per hour wind will make it feel like the teens. Still going to be chilly when they get off the bus this afternoon. There'll be plenty of sunshine, but 37 degrees, that 14 mile per hour wind, kind of make it feel like lower 30s as you're heading out and about. In your day plan or forecast, if you're going to be out at lunchtime, certainly need the sunglasses, but also the coat. 35 degrees. In fact, we probably won't get above freezing until about 10 o'clock this morning, so watch out for that if you're going to be on the roads. Coming up in a few minutes, we do have a chance of seeing more snow showers overnight, and that could produce some accumulations for spots. We'll have the latest on that. Warmer temperatures in the weekend forecast. We'll sort that out for you here in just a bit. Scott Lauren. Ken, as you well know, we've got a couple of very significant traffic issues, so we've got team coverage for you this morning. First, we'll start south side drivers. You need to avoid a major street going into downtown Indianapolis. Yeah, this has nothing to do with what fell from the sky. This is what actually came from the ground. Drew Blair is live along Meridian. There's a water main break there, huh? And this is a mess, guys. Unfortunately, those drivers around here didn't have a chance to check in with Daybreak before they left the house, so they are now stuck in this slowdown. We are on Meridian Street, just south of Troy Avenue, before Hannah, and the water main break across the street from us. You can see Citizens Energy is hard at work. They have been for a couple of hours now. They have that northbound lane shut down, but there are drivers waiting in a backup to then get around it. So traffic is having to be directed to Despite the lane shutdown, people aren't taking different routes, so they're waiting for the southbound traffic to be halted and they can make their way through. So definitely a slowdown, but man, what a mess. There is so much standing water around here. Actually, a parking lot across the street from us looks like a lake. And there are homes. The water main break itself is in front of a home, so I don't know what kind of uh, damage may have been caused from this, but there's a lot of water everywhere. So far, it doesn't appear that the road, is, as far as Meridian Street, is necessarily slick, though with these temperatures, we know that could definitely be an issue. I am told that this could continue to be a job for Citizens Energy for another six hours. So we're talking noon, one o'clock today when that work could be complete. Now, it could be earlier than that, but Citizens wanted to give that ballpark as a possibility for up to six hours from now. 
They're, they're blaming aging infrastructure on this water main break. They say this water main is about 50 years old. So these things happen. We know we've covered them before, but this is an area you certainly want to avoid. Scott and Lauren just don't have to wait in the backup if you know in advance. And Drew, to be clear again, an eight hour project, probably about six hours left on it, maybe about lunchtime. Hopefully, unless there's some miracle that they're done sooner, let us know. Drew, thanks. And as she said, it's not iced over there. Right. There's certainly the water there if it gets sure. cold enough. East side of Indianapolis, we've got big problems that do involve ice. Nina, uh, unspool all this for us. I guess starting there on the south side. Yeah, let's start on the south side where we are so thankful to have Drew's eyes this morning to really give us that in-person view of how that water main break is impacting folks in that area. Again, this is on Meridian Street and Troy Avenue, so on the south side, and we are starting to see those traffic backups on our map, both heading west and also heading north. So that's an area, as Drew said, that you just want to avoid right now. And we do even have a minor wreck in that area that Drew has told me isn't really a big issue and we don't know if it's connected to the water main break, but it's just another snag to deal with in that area. So something you do want to avoid. And as you mentioned, Scott, icy conditions off to our east. So you see that happening here. This has been like this for a couple of hours. According to Indiana State Police, dozens of slide offs happened there this morning. You see lots of cars off to the side. Just in this one picture alone provided by one of our live in-dot cameras there. We also have another view of the interstate and people moving very slowly through this area. So it's cold enough. They got just enough snow to make it nice and slick on the roads. You really need to take it slow in this area and maybe even avoid it if you can. But again, this is an interstate, a major thoroughfare. So not really something that people can uh, completely avoid this morning. We do have a crew on the ground on the east side, and we will check in with them in just a few minutes. Scott? All right, uh, Nina, thanks so much. Five minutes after 7 o'clock right now. Uh, let's get on to other top stories of the morning. New on daybreak a new report leading to criticism of the vice president mike pence the story says pence used a private email account for state business while he was still governor of indiana so right now the indy star is reporting that pence discussed a range of issues including security matters on that personal account 24 hour news jessica smith is live in the newsroom with all of the details that we know so far good morning good morning the indy star says then governor mike pence used an aol count to talk to top advisors about security issues. And the star also reports his account was hacked last summer. The newspaper says Pence discussed homeland security issues and security at the governor's mansion. Hillary Clinton's use of a private server and email account was a major issue throughout the 2016 campaign. You'll remember Trump supporters chanting, lock her up at campaign rallies. Pence was one of Clinton's harshest critics on the matter. Here's what Clinton's former press secretary had to say about all this. All during the campaign, we were trying to convey that we thought that the discussion of, and outrage about Hillary Clinton's email use was completely overblown, considering how common the practice was among other government officials. And so to learn that the vice president himself was now, um, you know, using the same practice, it, it just is just another indication of how hypocritical all the attacks were against Hillary Clinton for a year and a half. In a statement, the vice president's office says Pence did nothing wrong in any comparison to Clinton is absurd. Indiana law does not prohibit public officials from using private email, but they have to keep all records of official business in order to comply with public records requests. Now, the Star reports Pence hired outside counsel as he was leaving office to review his AOL emails and transfer them to the state if need be. If you want to read more about the story, you can go to our website, wishtv.com. Scott and Lauren. Jessica, thank you. It is seven minutes after seven o'clock, new on daybreak. An update on a terrible story that we've followed for years. One of the people serving time for an extreme case of abuse will not get a new day in court. We learned that an appellate judge denied the appeal for Joetta Sells. Kylie's in the newsroom right now. Talk about more on what was behind this decision. Good morning. Good morning. This is the document that was filed yesterday by that judge. In it, it says that the attorney for Joetta Sells filed the appeal in order to argue that her conviction violated a double jeopardy law and that her sentence was inappropriate. But as you mentioned, Lauren, a judge did deny that appeal, stating that Sells freely entered a guilty plea and says when she did that, she lost her right for an appeal. Sells pleaded guilty to 10 of 12 counts of abuse, confinement, and battery in September of 2015. A month later, a judge sentenced her to 24 years behind bars. Prosecutors said that Joetta Sells and her husband, Steve Sells, 
locked the autistic girl in a bedroom for more than a year, forcing her to relieve herself in a bucket while they continued to collect government assistance checks meant for her care. Steve Sells was also sentenced to 24 years behind bars, and Crystal Sells, Joetta's daughter, is also charged in the case. The teen collapsed in December of 2015. When emergency responders arrived, they say they found the 15-year-old near death, weighing only 40 pounds. Joetta Sells said the teen refused to eat and had a chromosomal disorder. The teen's new caregiver, however, testified in court, saying the teen shovels food in her mouth, has gained a considerable amount of weight, can clean herself, and has since been on trips to the state fair. The presiding judge at the time of Joetta Sell's sentencing, he called the abuse mind-boggling and evil. But again, a judge, an appellate judge, did deny the appeal of Joetta Sells, and she will be serving her full 24 years behind bars in a state prison. All right, Kylie, thank you. It is nine minutes after 7 o'clock. Also in Crime Watch 8, Muncie is moving forward with a community crime prevention program that's been very successful in Indianapolis. Organizers held a meeting Thursday night asking for volunteers for a 10-point coalition. More than a dozen people signed up there. Muncie has seen a spike in drug problems. There have been a three recent homicides there. The group says it wants to encourage people to work with police to keep neighborhoods safer. It plans to meet again Monday and then hit the streets for the first time officially Thursday night next week. All new this morning on Daybreak, the Purdue men's basketball team has clinched the Big Ten title. The Boilermakers were already guaranteed a share of the championship after they beat IU this week. But a last second miss last night in the Iowa Wisconsin game sealed Purdue's title. Here's the moment. To the rim. Can it? No. Fair with the rebound. And Iowa has come into Madison and stolen it. Yeah, Purdue was sharing the title with Wisconsin, but the Badgers lost last night. Team tweeted out a photo just not too long after it with the caption, we are sharing, hashtag outright. And the Boilermakers play Northwestern in the regular season finale on Sunday. That's 10 minutes after the hour. And still ahead, we have another check of weather and traffic for our cold Friday morning. Ken says we should have a milder weekend ahead. And there are very icy road conditions near Greenfield here on State Road 9 and also on I-70. We'll bring you updates on what we know coming up. Live from Wish TV's 24-hour News 8, this is breaking news. And it is breaking traffic news at 7:13. If you're just joining us, we have had some very slick conditions. There were some snow flurries that fell. They stuck in one part on I-70, Nina, and it's caused a real issue. Absolutely. Out near Greenfield, near State Road 9, that's really where this is centered, out to State Road 109 to the east. These are very, very slick conditions, and it's caused dozens of slide-offs, according to Indiana State Police. Fortunately, no serious injuries this morning, but take Taking a look off in that direction, you can see an incident has plotted there. So I don't know if they just finally threw that up on the map uh, to show that they're having problems out there. But these slide offs started happening prior to 6 a.m. this morning. And if we take a look at our in-dot camera in that area, you can see vehicles stopped all along this roadway off onto the side. I've seen others into a ditch in other areas. So it's proving just how slick it is off in that area and how slow people are really needing to take it. Take a look at these folks trying to travel through and just how slow they're going right now. We do have another view from another live in dot camera there of traffic moving through very slowly using hazard lights a lot of the time. So snow is not falling in this area anymore, but the roads are surely slick. Since we started to see these conditions, we did send a crew out this way. Brittany Lewis is live there. Brittany, what have you been able to find out since arriving on scene? Well, we are standing on the overpass uh, of State Road 9, where it goes over I-70, and we're really seeing problems all around us. I want to start with the interstate here. You can see uh, on eastbound I-70, there is a slide off there. Several squad cars blocking the left lane here. Cars moving very slowly in that direction. Cars are also moving very slowly in the westbound lanes because of these icy conditions. But I also want to show you what we're seeing on State Road 9 here. If you look at the ground here, you can also see very icy conditions here as we were driving over here. We really had to slow down. And then you can see right over there off that exit ramp, there's a semi that actually rolled on its side as it was coming off of the exit ramp. I talked to that police officer that you see right there and he said, fortunately, uh, the driver of that semi was not injured. I did just speak with that officer and he told me that at this point in time, they are only responding to three slide-offs, but you can see there is a, an ambulance driving through, so maybe 
maybe responding to more of a, a serious crash. But when I talked to Hancock County dispatchers, they told me that while there have been dozens of slide offs throughout the morning, there have not been any serious injuries. Uh, but we just got here on the scene. We're going to continue to talk with police, see what they've been seeing throughout the morning. But if you're headed in this direction, certainly slow down. Brittany, thank you so much for that perspective. I think really showing exactly what we're seeing on the ground there in the chaos that's happening in terms of emergency management, trying to address all of those slide offs and take care of those people who were part of it. Fortunately, again, no serious injuries, but that's an area that we will continue to watch for you this morning. Now, another issue that we're looking at down in the south side of the city at Meridian Street and Troy Avenue is a water main break. Uh, we do have a crew on scene there as well, giving us updates. We're told these. Uh, Repairs could take up to six more hours before those northbound lanes on Meridian Street will open. So that's something to think about. If you can get around this, this is easier to get around than that situation over on the east side. You probably want to avoid this area as much as possible this morning. Again, so much of this related to the weather this morning, Ken. And it was just a few uh, pockets of snow showers that were around here uh, this morning that didn't really produce much accumulation, but produced a glaze and an invisible glaze at that. And that's why we've had the slide off so far. You can see no snow at Morse Reservoir. And this is one of the areas that had the snow showers kind of burst on through that location. So unfortunately, a little bit of snow causing a lot of problems. This just false returns on the radar that are showing up here. Had a few flurries still in eastern Indiana, but this should not be any consequence compared to what we saw a little bit earlier. As we kind of take you back over the past three hours, you'll see how we had some of those snow showers kind of go on through north and then it kind of picked up a little bit of intensity as it crossed I-70 there in Hancock County. That's the reason why we're having really that kind of focused problem area. But I would say any areas east and north of Indianapolis may have a slick spot. So just use a little bit slower speeds if you're heading out this morning. Temperature wise, 26 Indianapolis. Factor in the wind, it feels like 14. And the forecast here for the day ahead, especially for the bus stop for the kids, uh, temperatures in the mid 20s getting on the bus here this morning, mid 30s getting off the bus later on this afternoon. So certainly it will remain a chilly day all across central Indiana. So keep that in mind if you're going to be out and about. And here's a look how those temperature changes are going to play out here as we go through the course of the day ahead. We're going to stay well below the average high of this state of 46 degrees, but we've been talking a lot about above average temperatures. Not the case today. In fact, we won't get above freezing till about 10 o'clock this morning, so keep that in mind if you're going to be out. 33 to 39 degrees expected for afternoon highs. If you're heading out this evening, 31 at 7 o'clock, 29 at 9 o'clock, 29 at midnight. Quiet evening, however, it's going to be a little bit chilly. I want to show you overnight in Storm Track 8 Futurecast. Watch what happens as the leading edge of warmer air starts to build back in. We could see some more snow start to develop overnight into the morning hours on Saturday. This could produce up to an inch of snow areas east and north of Indianapolis. Watch out for that tonight with temperatures dropping down into the 20s. That snow will start to move out around noontime. So again, between 7 o'clock and noon, eastern Indiana may still have a little bit of snow to contend with then warmer air will surge in very quickly for the rest of the day on Saturday melt whatever snow is around. You'll see temperatures a big contrast because the snow will kind of knock down the numbers a little bit low 40s to mid 40s from Richmond Kokomo and Muncie Indianapolis westward and southward should climb at or above 50 degrees and then everybody will enjoy warmer temperatures for Sunday lower 60s upper 50s expected for high so by far probably the nicer of the two weekend days will be on Sunday but still all things considered not a bad weekend just have to get past those snow showers Saturday morning rain showers in the forecast on Monday 65 expected for a high 59 with thunderstorm chances for everybody on Tuesday 50 on Wednesday 55 on Thursday and rain chances again at the end of next week with high still in the middle 50s. Hundreds of companies want to help build the border wall, and Indiana has some of the largest medical debt in the nation. I'm Jane King. I'll have those stories coming up. Call 24 Hour News 8 when you see breaking news. Our breaking news tip line is 24 8 News. That's 248 6397. Hey there, good morning. 723 right now. If you're just joining us, want to get you up to speed on some of the issues we're watching in the traffic front. Here's one big one. If you're traveling around Hancock County, you got to hop on I-70, Knightstown area, Greenfield area. This is in your future. All lanes east and westbound are really quite slow right now uh, because of slick conditions on the roadway. We had uh, some snow showers that fell in the area, really across the area overnight. But for whatever reason, they stuck 
in this particular area. So the roads are now very slick. So you're seeing that slow travel. We've also gotten uh, several reports of slide offs. Uh, we know from Brittany Lewis, who's there on the ground, uh, that police are responding to three of them. They feel like the others are able to kind of right themselves. But we'll continue to bring you live coverage from that section right there in Hancock County. At 723, also want to get to the morning's business headlines, including word that the more people in Indiana are likely than other states to be saddled with medical debt. And also companies are lining up to bid on building President Trump's border wall. Jane King's live at the NASDAQ with those stories on this Friday morning. Good morning. Uh, good morning to you, Scott Lauren, and happy Friday. And 300 companies, in fact, have already said they would be interested in helping build a border wall between the U.S. and Mexico. They range from construction companies to fence builders to concrete firms, according to CNN. Now, proposals are expected to begin submission next week. And Hoosiers have the fourth most medical debt in the nation. The Urban Institute did the study and found about a third of Indiana residents have some past due medical bills. That's more than the national average of 23 percent. The researchers found a correlation between the debts and the state's uninsured rates, along with the availability of resources such as balanced billing laws and consumer awareness. Apple's Macs and iPads are losing luster in America's classrooms. Apple Insider says the products have fallen to third place behind Chromebooks and Windows devices. One reason is that Apple products are more expensive. And shares of Snap, the parent of Snapchat, soared on their Wall Street debut. The stock jumped 45 percent on the first trading day. That's impressive since Snapchat's user growth has been slowing and Snap doesn't have any profits. The company lost 514 million last year and 373 million the year before that. Okay, stocks don't always go up as uh, we've got used to that, right? The Dow, though, down yesterday, 113 points, the worst day in a little over a month. Looks like we're going to open flat this morning. Not a lot of action so far today. Live from the NASDAQ market site in Times Square, I'm Jane King. Back to you, Scott Lauren. Jane, there's a little change you might see in the shelves at the grocery store the, uh, the look of brawny paper towels for the month of March. Yes, brawny paper towels replacing its burly flannel wearing hunk with a woman in a nod to Women's History Month for March. Parent company Georgia Pacific will also make donations to promote girls to study STEM careers. I love that. Look at that hashtag strength has no gender. Yeah. Flannel's still there though. Looks of good. course. It is. <laughs> Flannel's so in. She looks great. <laughs> Thank you, Jamie. It is a 725 right now, 26 degrees. Come, coming up next, our team coverage of weather and traffic continues, especially on this day where we've seen slick conditions. We are all local all morning here on Daybreak. We post breaking news and story updates 24 hours a day on Facebook. Join the conversation by following Wish TV. We continue to follow breaking traffic news right now. I-70 and State Road 9 are incredibly slick around a Knightstown. We have the only news crew on the ground this morning. This half hour, we're going to talk live with police just a moment from now. Also ahead this hour, new research that says something you might be doing to improve your sleep could actually be making it worse. Also new this hour, we'll have to wait a little longer to find out if an Indiana man will get the chance of a lifetime at Wrigley Field. That's going to be an update for a great story we brought you just in the last couple of weeks here on Daybreak. Uh, good morning to you. It's Friday morning. March 3rd is the date. Always appreciate you starting your day with 24-hour news. Eight. Lots to talk about in the weather. Some of it relates to the traffic as well, but let's jump in with that first forecast. Ken Brewer, what are you seeing right now? And we're seeing temperatures well below freezing, and that's going to be part of the reason why we've had a few problems out there this morning. Your forecast here uh, for the day ahead, we're seeing temperatures in the upper 20s at 9 o'clock, 35 degrees at noontime, 37 degrees expected by 4 o'clock here for this afternoon. So temperatures will stay well below freezing here, at least through the morning hours. And you see some of the areas have not seen any problems at all. No signs or even hints of the earlier snow there at Michigan Road. But here's where we do have some signs of some of the flakes that are still around. These are just flurries. We're not seeing any current additional problems of the snow. But as we kind of go back in time here over the past three or four hours, you see how he had a burst of snow that kind of passed on through north and then east of Indianapolis. It did not put much in the accumulation, but it was just enough to put a glaze on the roads, and that's what's been causing the problems there east of Indianapolis. Combine that with the fact that temperatures have been running below the freezing mark. We are at 26 in Indianapolis and 23 degrees in Kokomo. All temperatures are below freezing here this morning. So that's leading to some of the problems that we're seeing on the roads. And for the latest on what's happening at the roads, Let's go to Nina Criscola. Nina? Okay, Ken, this morning we are dealing with several issues on the roadways, and we continue to watch the east side where 
as you said, there are icy conditions in that direction. Now, you're seeing those little white patches that say snowy on our weather conditions map. That's where it's detecting snow falling. So there's actually slick conditions across the area, but really it's been concentrated to the east side on I-70 where we've seen the most issues. You see the red and orange on the interstate, especially heading westbound toward downtown. Our in-dot camera there has been giving us a pretty good view of the backup. Look how slow that traffic is moving right there. And you see the emergency responders there, a car off in the ditch right there. So big issues on this road. And I'm going to take you back out to the map and show you another view from another live in-dot camp of really slow moving traffic and cars off the road. Fortunately, we do have a crew on the ground out in Hancock County. Brittany Lewis is there with the latest on the conditions and the slide offs in that area. Brittany. Yeah, Nina, I want to give you a look at the interstate here. Uh, check out I-70 traffic moving eastbound and westbound, moving very, very slowly. I do have with me right now Greenfield Police Sergeant Chuck McMichael. You said that dispatch received their first call about a slide off just before five. What have you guys seen, guys seen since then? Well, since then, it's been pretty much a continuous call to call to call. Uh, vehicles that have slid off the roadways and ended up in the ditch. Or we've had a few crashes uh, that have just been uh, mostly property damage accidents. This morning. And I was telling the anchors earlier when we first got here that there really are problems all around this, around us. What are you guys seeing, uh, first of all, on the interstates? The interstates this morning have been pretty um, just covered with ice, very slick and very hazardous. What happens with weather that we saw last night, just a little snowburst, it gets on the cold roadways and just freezes instantly. So. Our, most of our problems this morning have been on the interstates along Interstate 70 between Greenfield and Henry County line. We've had a few crashes off of the interstate, but mostly interstate related this morning. And I want to show you guys, uh, there was a semi that actually rolled on its side uh, just off of the exit ramp here. What happened there? A uh, gentleman was coming up the off ramp to State Road 9. Uh, the back end got a little loose on him. He started to fishtail a little bit, got control. As he come up to the top of the ramp, went to apply his brakes again, fishtailed again, and ended up into the ditch. And uh, just the wet, the wet ground that we've had from the rains the last few days, he just grabbed a hold of his tires and rolled him over. Mm -hmm. But no serious injuries so far this morning. There have not been any injuries reported in any of our accidents and slide offs this morning, which is a good thing. Your recommendation for drivers this morning? Always to slow down. Anytime you see the roads are, uh, you know, what appear to be wet, when the temperatures are this cold and the wind chills are, you know, in the teens, it's always a good, uh, a good idea to slow down and give yourself a little more stopping distance from the car in front of you. Great. Well, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Anita, we're going to stay out here to monitor uh, the situation for as long as we can. Okay, Brittany, thank you so much. Again, take it slow out there. Really icy conditions. It's never that important to get to work on time. It's better to get you there safely. Now, we do have another issue on the south side, a water main break we've been watching for hours in that area. We have a live picture and a crew on the ground there. You can see citizens' crews working to repair this water main break on Meridian Street at Troy Avenue. This could take several more hours to to repair. So we really need to ask you to avoid this area. This is something you can get around much easier than the situation over on the east side. There is a minor crash that's been plotted on the map as well near there. Just a minor wreck, but just another snag in an area that's already seeing a lot of problems this morning. Scott Lauren. Okay. Nina, thank you. All right, Nina, thanks. If you're just joining us here this morning, I want to give you a quick look at some of the other top local stories we're following, too. The story out of the Indy Star is getting a lot of attention in Washington. It says that Vice President Mike Pence used a private email account to do official business during his time as Indiana's governor. Emails sent on a private account have to be archived, according to the state's Public Records Act. Speaking on behalf of Pence, Mark Lauder says Pence, quote, maintained a state email account and a personal email account. And Lauder also indicated the previous Indiana governors did the same. The Star Report says that Pence's private AOL account was hacked last summer. That is a story we covered here on 24 Hour News 8. Critics of Pence are seizing on the report, claiming it shows hypocrisy, as on the campaign trail, Pence was a frequent critic of Hillary Clinton's use of a private email server when she was Secretary of State. In Indianapolis overnight, a man is seriously hurt after an overnight crash with a train. This happened at Massachusetts Avenue and Sherman Drive around 1 o'clock this morning. Crews had to pull him from the vehicle. Also this morning, the Purdue men's basketball team alone holds the Big Ten title. A late-night loss by Wisconsin meant the Boilermakers won't have to share anymore. 
This is Purdue's first outright title, uh, excuse me, <clears throat> first title since 2010 when the team shared with two other teams. It's the first outright title in some 21 years since 1996. And this weekend, sports director Anthony Calhoun is going to be traveling to Arizona. He'll be covering spring training. The Chicago Cubs are there. So are the White Sox, by the way. AC's live reports will start on Sunday. And this morning, we've learned that a special contest for Cubs fans is taking longer than the team first thought. Too much suspense. Last month, we introduced <laughs> you to Irv Schreiber. He's the 86-year-old Cubs fan from Indiana who was a part of a contest. The team is offering 20 fans a chance to present a player or a coach with their World Series ring in April. We were supposed to find out the winners this week, but now the team says it's still contacting the winners because oh, there wow. were so many entries. The team says it'll announce the winners next week. So we'll stay on the story and stay in touch with Mr. Schreiber and it, see if he is chosen. And if you don't remember his story, he has an entire room in his house mm -hmm. dedicated to all of his Cubs memories, mm -hmm. ticket stubs, pictures. He got very emotional just even describing the possibility that he might one day be at Wrigley Field presenting that ring. We're crossing our fingers for him. 736 right now. We're at 26 degrees. Coming up, one of our top local stories today, as you know, is the weather. You're going to need that winter coat here this morning. As some parts of central Indiana saw some flurries and showers from the snow, that milder weather is in the forecast. More on that coming up. If you've been wondering, where's Randy? He's home, recovering from a bit of a health scare. We are live in his house with cameras <laughs> and lights and everything. He'll join us in just a minute. Our sleep is so disturbed, we're not giving it the priority it deserves. First, though, what experts are saying about the downside of using technology to help get a good night's rest. That advice coming up at 745. Good morning at 740 on the dot. We do have a traffic alert for you this morning out on the east side on Interstate 70. There are icy conditions hampering drivers and sending many off the roads this morning. Dozens of slide offs according to Indiana State Police. Here's one of our live in dot cameras there showing some of the slowdowns. We also have another view of the interstate here where traffic, gosh, look how slow it is moving there. We are told by Greenfield Police that the roads are extremely slick and hazardous. So we're going to continue to watch this situation for you here on Daybreak and others across the area. Scott? Jump in any time if it gets worse or better. You know, we appreciate it. 740 right now. Hearing reaction now from President Trump on an issue that uh, has uh, plagued his administration. So Trump went as far as to call the investigation into Attorney General Jeff Sessions a witch hunt. It all goes back to what Sessions said during his confirmation hearing. In it, Sessions told senators he didn't have communication with the Russians last year. However, it came to light this week that Sessions met with a Russian ambassador twice in September. The session says the meeting had to do with his role in the Senate Armed Forces Committee. But after repeated calls from Republicans and Democrats alike, Sessions recused himself yesterday from any investigations into any matters with Trump's presidential campaign. Around 9 o'clock last night, the president sent out a series of tweets about Sessions. Here's part of what he said, quote, the Democrats are overplaying their hand. They lost the election and now they have lost their grip on reality. The real story is all of the illegal leaks of classified and other information. It is a total witch hunt. It is now 741 and we're at 26 degrees in Indianapolis. You can see a little bit of blue on Viper radar right now. Some of those flurries, I suppose, Ken. That's right, and just a few of those. Otherwise, you see clear skies elsewhere here across central Indiana. We'll talk about sunshine and a warming trend ahead in your weekend forecast. It is 744. More local news now as Wish TV continues to cover central Indiana. Yeah, we'll start this morning in Carroll County. The reward fund is held by double murder is now sitting at $216,000. Investigators that believe they're close to finding the person responsible. Investigators tell us 11,000 tips came in just yesterday alone in the deaths of Libby German and Abby Williams. They even got a tip from as far away as Australia. Happening today, the Moose Family Center is hosting a benefit for the two girls in Lafayette. We have more information on wishtv.com. In Richmond, volunteers are helping newborn babies affected by the growing heroin epidemic. Last year, about 35% of the babies born at Reed Hospital were addicted to opioids or illicit drugs. So the hospital started a baby rocker program, and you're seeing it in action right here in this video. Basically, people just help soothe babies going through withdrawal. The volunteers come in, they sit, and they rock the babies, just comfort them. Donna Jurgens is one of the original volunteers. She has five grandchildren, and she worked as a nurse for 25 years before retiring, about 10 years ago. I'm sorry that there's a need, but I'm thrilled to be able to help the babies and maybe um, console them a little bit as they're going through the pain of withdrawal. Believe it or not, a lot of them will be up front with us and tell us. Um, and we explain to them that's just to help us care for their 
their baby. Um, so we usually know before the baby's even born. The hospital started testing all mothers who give birth at the hospital back in 2015. They also work with the mothers to help them get clean too. All right, it's 746 right now. Honest question here, do you use something to help track your sleep? Hmm. <laughs> new on Daybreak. There's some new research that says all those apps and trackers might actually contribute to your insomnia. Diane Lee has the information. <laughs> Snoring, <coughs> allergies, wow. children. When sleep competes with the waking world, it rarely wins. I uh, wake up in the middle of the night almost every night. You feel like you're tired all the time. I could always use more sleep. In fact, Sally Rozier says she uses a fitness tracker to help her assess her sleep. It tells you kind of like when I guess when you move, when you like rolling over and stuff, I don't know. Is that helpful to help you learn to sleep better? I don't, I mean, just, uh, no, I just use it as, oh, okay, I got enough sleep tonight. Researchers are now cautioning people from relying too heavily on their sleep tracking apps and devices. A recent Rush University medical study found a few major flaws. For one, the trackers can be misleading. I kind of figure that because there are times where I'll sit up and watch TV at night, and so. And it will count that as yeah. sleeping? Yeah, sometimes it will. The study also found people who checked the data became more stressed. Sleep expert Sherry Angel Newman says that contributes to insomnia. Turn off your worry at 9 o'clock or whatever time works best for you. After that time, no more worry. And try to give yourself an opportunity to relax about 30 minutes before bedtime. Sleep experts say it's not like you have to throw out the app or device. They can actually give you a rough estimate of how many hours you've slept a night, but don't use them to diagnose serious issues like sleep apnea. To catch more Z's, limit your caffeine, stick to a regular sleep schedule, and limit your screen time in the bedroom. We're going to bed with electronics, with gadgets. We're waking up and sleep texting. And, and, and our sleep is so disturbed, we're not giving it the priority it deserves. Rozier only got five hours last night, but after all this talk of sleep... I might try to go to bed um, earlier tonight. Oh, 5 man. <laughs> That's what you got total? I think I'm kidding, 550, yeah. Stay off my stuff, Brewer. <laughs> There's an app for that. There is. <laughs> so don't read it after 9 o'clock. You, you know, heard I, the prescription I've never, there. I don't like wearing I may have one of those watches, too, but I don't like wearing it to bed to track yeah. it. Then it would not be a sleepwalker just, or a sleep tracker. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, but, yeah, I mean, you can still have in the app. You can say, hey, I went to bed now, and then I wake up now, and that's close enough. I don't care how many times I was restless or yeah. tossed or turned. Well, or it'll probably just make you depressed. To jumping jacks in the middle of the night. I don't care about that. You too, huh? <laughs> I thought I was the only one. All right, so let's talk about this cold start. Uh, you know, oftentimes when we talk about chilly starts, it's just the temperature, but this day, yeah, we had some fl uh, flurries that had an impact on the roads. Yeah, too. and really, you're not going to see signs of accumulation. It's just not right. to put kind of a glaze on the roads, and that's what caused some of the traffic issues that Nina will have for you here in just a moment. But you can see on Storm Track 8 Storm Tracker, those have since moved away from us here. A flurry or two, perhaps across parts of Fayette County, south of uh, uh, Connersville, but that's about the only extent of what we've had. And even here in the past hour or so, those flurries have been falling apart. But I didn't want to show you what was taking place and what was causing the problems here on the east side. Here comes that burst of snow showers it was around four o'clock this morning. It was enough to put just a minor dusting and an invisible coat on the roads, and that's why we were having the problems on I-70 on the east side that Nino will have the latest on for you here in just a moment. Storm Track 8 feature cast showing that we're going to see sunshine for the day today, so make sure you pack the sunglasses along with you. Snow showers will move on out, and we're not going to have any precipitation here through the course of the day, so that's certainly some good news, and temperatures will get above the freezing mark, so anything that's around in that glaze of the, of the roads will start to melt fairly shortly here in the next couple hours. 26 degrees, 16 mile per hour wind makes it feel like 14 wind chills in the teens and barely holding on to double digits for you folks in Kokomo and uh, 21 even as far south as Columbus as far as the wind chill is concerned. So temperatures for today, we are going to be well shy of the average high of this state, which is 46 degrees, but we will get at or above freezing about 11 o'clock here this morning, then hold on to about 37 degrees throughout the course of the day and then fall off into the evening. Highs anywhere else we'll be seeing uh, mid 30s north of Indianapolis, 33 degrees, upper 30 is close to 40 down in southern Indiana. If you're heading out this evening, 31 degrees at 7 o'clock, 29 degrees at 9 o'clock and 11 o'clock. Not as much wind, so that's certainly some good news, but there will be a little bit of a light breeze. I want to draw your attention here in Storm Track 8 Future Cast of what's going to be developing overnight and into Saturday morning. As warmer air moves in, that collision between the milder air and the colder air is going to produce the possibility of snow. And we could see around an inch of snow areas north and east of Indianapolis with this burst that starts to push on through. Temperatures will be in the 20s, so that will stick on the ground tomorrow morning. 
That snowbound will last until about noontime, and then weather will start to clear on out. Warmer air will start to surge in for everybody, but the limit of the warm air is going to be in eastern Indiana. 41 for High Richmond, 42 in Muncie, 44 Kokomo. Indy Westward will make it into the 50s. 50 for High here in Indianapolis, 54 to 57 degree temperatures for Saturday once you get out to the west. Everybody will see a warm up on Sunday, upper 50s and lower 60s. So overall, a mild weekend, just kind of that hiccup on Saturday morning. So watch out for that if you're traveling north and east in the morning hours. On Saturday, scattered rain showers on Sunday, 65 or Monday, excuse me, 65 for high. Sunday will be sunny. Thunderstorms in the forecast again on Tuesday, 59 expected for a high. Dry and a little bit cooler Wednesday and Thursday. Highs in the low to mid 50s and another chance of rain again by the middle part of next week. Nina? Ken, thanks. We will start on the east side with our traffic watch this morning where we've seen some icy conditions really wreak havoc on traffic in that area. You can see it right here, those red colors. I'll zoom in for you and take a look at one of our in-dot cameras. Indiana State Police say there were dozens of slide-offs on the interstate early this morning. It is starting to clear up in terms of cleaning up those slide-offs and getting people um, traveling through smoothly, but it's still slow going because of the traffic conditions in that area. The snow bursts along with the cold temperatures were just the perfect equation for causing slide offs really early this morning. This was prior to six o'clock in the morning and just a little bit after. And you see at least one car off on the side right there. And we do have a crew on the ground there on the east side in Hancock County who's been able to provide us with some really great video this morning and up to the minute updates on situations and how they're responding to this situation. Now, on the south side of the city, we're also dealing with another situation, a water main break there on Meridian Street and Troy Avenue. If we take it out to our map, I'll show you exactly where this is. It is causing slowdowns. So if you can avoid this area, which is much easier than avoiding Interstate 70 on the east side, you should do so. It will take several more hours to clean up that area. A new report says Vice President Pence used a private email account while he was Indiana governor. Coming up, hear what his office says about that and why some people are calling him a hypocrite. Don't forget, Daybreak is all local all morning. I am. Hey there, good morning. Five minutes till the top of the hour right now. Okay, so, you know, yeah, it's cold outside, but we can still talk about the month of May sure. and racing, right? Sure. So, race fans have a new option in the month of May. Yeah, in case you missed it, Indianapolis Motor Speedway will offer camping inside the track for the Indy Grand Prix weekend. Now, this is not glamping that you have around the 500 weekend, but rather RV and tent camping during the road race. Camping spot will run from $125 for a tent site. Up to 300 if you bring one of them fancy campers or RV. Them fancy mm. ones. <laughs> All right. It's 7:56 right now. Kylie looks ahead to the 8 o'clock hour for us. It's been a busy morning already. It has, and it's going to stay that way for quite some time. We're following a, two big traffic issues. One on the south side after a water main break. Drew Blair is live at the scene where crews are working to fix that problem. And ice has formed on I-70 near Knightstown. Brittany Lewis is there live with the current conditions, and Nina's here in studio keeping an eye on both situations. And you may have noticed Randy Allis hasn't been here with us all week. No, he's not on one of his 30 weeks of vacation. He's actually at home recovering after having sudden gallbladder surgery. He's joining us live on Daybreak in about 20 minutes to let us know how he's doing. 